By the 70s, the retail situation had only become worse, and the city decided that if Santa Monica couldn't beat the malls, it would join them. The city council created a redevelopment district covering the districts on either side of 3rd Street between Broadway and Colorado. You, you saw these blocks in that aerial shot of Sears. They had filled in in that time, um, and the city condemned them with eminent domain. Those blocks included the building that housed the Evening Outlook, the local newspaper, as well as other businesses. The city sold the land, 10 acres, to the Rouse Company to build an enclosed shopping mall subsidized by two city-owned parking structures. Here's a photograph from 1958 of the view north from the Main Street Bridge showing the Evening Outlook building. Note the clock tower and the central tower buildings in the background and that Third Street comes through, there on the right, all the way to Colorado Avenue. The architect of Santa Monica Place was Frank Geary before he became famous. Here's the same view from 2008. Note the same street light as in the earlier photograph, um, showing part of the characteristically Gary chain link screen that covers the parking lot on which is hung a huge sign for Santa Monica Place. Suzanne Frick, the former planning director in Santa Monica, once told me that because the Third Street Mall to the north was so de derelict, the principal street entrance for the mall was originally intended to be on Colorado Avenue opposite Sears and just visible on the right in the photograph. In this photograph. Uh, when Santa Monica Place opened in, in 1980, it was a huge success, but it drove the last nails in the coffin of retail on the mall. Later in the turnabout is Fair Play Department, with the success of the Third Street Promenade, the enclosed mall fell into decline. To acknowledge the changed foot traffic pattern, the entrance on Broadway was redesigned and, the store was, and a store was added with direct access to the street. Here's a 2007 photo of the revised entry on Broadway. Later, of course, Maserich, the owner of the mall, deconstructed it to turn Santa Monica Place into an open-air extension of the promenade. Uh, here's the entrance today. I do want to note that I suspect that Frank Gehry had some, some dream of using the mall to replicate urban civility. His original entrances on 2nd and 4th Streets and Colorado tried to create inviting connections to the street. But there's only so much one can do with the realities of a suburban form. Whatever Gary might have wanted to do with the mall, the two department stores that anchored the mall built two streetscape destroying monstrosities. Here's a photo of one of them in its original form looking at the Colorado side. It's hard to attribute any concept of architecture to this building. <laughs> uh, you could call it modern, but you could also say that it replicates the fortress wall around the medieval city. It's timeless in its hostility. Fortunately, cities and buildings can evolve. With the coming of Expo Rail, catty corner from this store, now Bloomingdale's, the city and the property owners worked to improve the store's connection to the street, uh, which is now itself being reconstructed as the city's Colorado Esplanade.